Handbrakes, so many choices, right? I'm Fielding Shredder, welcome back to the channel. And today we we're talking about handbrakes, e-brakes, emergency brakes, rip sticks, whatever you call them at home. It's all the same thing. And the idea here is that I'm just gonna talk about some of the different ones available on the market. And I'm going to talk about the pros and cons and kind of compare them and contrast them for you at home at the comfort of your, co your couch at home. So you don't have to worry about which one do you wanna buy. Now, I wanna start by saying all of these I purchased at retail price on my own dime. None of these were sponsored. This will be a completely unbiased review and there will be pros and cons for all of them. And I'm just gonna be completely honest with my entire review here. I'm gonna get down to the, some of the nitty gritty details, some of the nerd stuff you may not care about or you may really wanna know why would a $29 handbrake be you know, way worse or is it worse than a $200 handbrake and, and in between, you know, we'll find out today. So first I'm gonna say the different e-brakes have different configurations. So it's gonna depend on your application at home. So let's go over those three basic applications. You've got the pull up style, which here, let me, let me get some of these out of my way here. There's so many <laughs> to choose from. And also just so you know, these are not even half of the available handbrakes on the market today but these are just the ones I got my hands on in the meantime and I was tired of spending money. So basically you have the three different styles. You have pullback with the handbrake, or sorry, the master cylinder in front of you. You have pullback with the master cylinder behind and then you have pull up. So this is a pull up style. You can see the master cylinder is behind. This would be one where you reach down, you pull up much like a factory handbrake. Most factory handbrakes are pull up style. And a lot of people prefer that. Chelsea Denofa is one of the, the pros that uses this style handbrake in his Formula Drift car. And he just is more comfortable with this. There's not a competitive advantage to going from one to the other. It's just all about your own personal preference and what you feel is the most comfortable. So this right here is a Chase Bays handbrake and it's a very high quality part. I think it retails for around 200 something dollars. Uh, I'll have to find, I'll have to double check that and let you know. But um, really nice quality part. It would be comparable to this right here, which is an ASD. This is going to be one of the more popular professional or high-end handbrakes. And this one's about $230 to $260, depending on configuration. Again, it's that pull-up style like this, where the master cylinder is behind you. Typically, this is behind your elbow and you know in the center console area and this is going to be the only part you grab or that you even see you know a lot of people hide this in the center console and just for for grins i've even got a fanatic digital handbrake this is going to be one that you use on your aceto corsa rig um, this is just for comparison's sake obviously you would never use this in your car at home but essentially this is able to be mounted as a pull-up style or vertically mounted as a pull-back style so either way, it's pretty pretty cool little thing. So again, I, I bought that, no, no sponsor plug here. Okay, so a couple of key differences between the Chase Bays and the ASD, for example, are gonna be the construction and the overall orientation. Uh, this one right here, you can see has a pass-through master cylinder. So what that means is that it's got an in and an out, there's no reservoir on the master cylinder itself. Uh, this one's going to come with its own banjo fittings, which is really nice. That's a nice addition that Chase Bays includes. This does not come with your standard Willwood master cylinder. And, you know, this is going to be used for an inline style e-brake. Now, uh, really nice design. It's in a slight downward tilt for the handbrake, which I'm not actually sure if that's going to make it a little bit difficult for bleeding. Um, typically, you know, they're oriented like this. Uh, they've chosen to package it where it's tilted on its side, 90 degrees. Uh, again, I don't know because I've never actually used one of these if that's gonna be better or worse uh, or make no difference in terms of bleeding. But typically if you've installed a, an e-brake at home, you know that bleeding these can be a pain in the butt. So this is a really nice design. It's an aluminum base construction. It's pretty thick. I think that's probably, I don't know, three eighths thick, maybe somewhere around there. Uh, billet aluminum. Uh, what's cool is they make the same base plate no matter what configuration handbrake you get. So you can adjust and, and do that accordingly. Uh, they actually come with some really nice countersunk hardware, some grade eight stuff that's really good. You can even see some countersunk holes here that are gonna be ideal for installing this handbrake. 
and they even offer a reinforcement plate. So this is gonna be some of the features you see on a more high-end application. You see a reinforcement plate, some hardware, and provisions for things like countersinking the hardware and so forth. Now, one thing I will say I was a little disappointed about, and again, I'm being completely honest, this is a fantastic product, but there is a little bit of play right here in the clevis that mounts for the master cylinder. And it's actually more play than I would have expected. And I disassembled this just to figure out what the heck is going on. And you can see it's just a, a split lock washer or a, a retaining pin. Uh, what are these called? C-clips, whatever they are. And so this right here has a specific size. And actually the handbrake handle itself, the diameter is, is a perfect fit. It's just got an, enough tolerance to let it slip in there. It's the clevis itself that has a little bit too big of a hole, which is what creates this. Now, it is important that the tolerances aren't quite too tight so that you know when you pull it, it doesn't have any resistance. It transfers that force all the way into the master cylinder itself, and then you can let go and it returns back to the normal resting position. So that's one thing I, I wish they would improve on. Uh, maybe they'll watch this video and say, hey, that's a great idea, and all they would have to do is drill that hole just slightly smaller, and that would fix the problem. So I could fix it myself with a little shim, no big deal. Now the ASD, again, similar design, very high quality piece. It is utilizing a Willwood part here. This is a hanging pedal assembly. It's a, a standard bracket. Uh, I believe it is aluminum as well. Yeah, it's aluminum as well. It's got a couple holes. Uh, they don't give you any sort of plate or anything, but it would be fairly simple to fabricate one yourself. They use a really nice uh, heim joint right here, nice hardware. These are what's called metal lock nuts or jet nuts. They're used in aircraft and other things that have a lot of vibration. And basically that allows you to tighten this as tight as you want uh, with an, an ability to leave a little bit of slack there so that it doesn't bind up at all. But then you can you know, make sure that that nut doesn't back off because it is a metal locking nut. Uh, their handle is a really nice design. You might wanna wear gloves when you use this. If you have this style at home, it's probably gonna get hot and it's not quite the most ergonomic, but it does have a good grip on it. The master cylinder options are universal, and that's one thing I wanted to say about all of these handbrakes, no matter what brand or what country they come from, <laughs> the master cylinder can be completely swapped from anything. So just get you a nice quality Willwood if you decide to go with one of the less expensive options, and this is what really matters. You know, the, the rest of the workings of the handbrake are important, of course, but this is what provides the fluid and has the master cylinder bore and the seals and everything. So this is really what matters. So get yourself a nice Willwood one. They're not very expensive. I think 50 or 60 bucks and you can get them in different sizes, which would of course depend on your application. So nice piece, uh, 200 and something dollars, pretty expensive. One of the most expensive on the market, but also one of the most popular. And that's because it's a great design. All right, now let's look at some of the less expensive options. Uh, this right here, is gonna be a pretty universal style. It's more popular on the market now and very inexpensive. This was $29 on you know, eBay or Amazon or anything like that. It has some interesting features, but there are some things left to be desired, let's say. Uh, so first we'll start off with the good things. Uh, it's got a, a pretty good handle design. The length of it is kind of short, so you have less leverage but that may help with your application if you don't have a lot of room or if you have something going on above it or below it. So that's kind of nice. On Underneath the mounting plate here, you can see that the front two holes are round, but these back two are slotted. So that would give you an option to give a little bit of front and back play, not much side to side, but if you need to kind of tweak it and get it exactly where you want it, or maybe if you missed drilling the hole by a little bit, then you'll be okay. You still put the hardware in it, no problem. You can see kind of a small gusset here. And they use a very inexpensive Heim joint, but it is still a Heim joint inside here. This is a, you know, standard 0.7 or, or 0.75 three quarter master pass through style comes with the handbrake, but it's not a very good quality one. So again, if you buy this one, I would recommend swapping this out for a Will Lloyd or a reputable, reputable brand. Now, the one thing, <laughs> the funny things about this, this bracket right here is very thin. You can see it's made of very thin. It is steel. I put a magnet on it earlier. So it can be welded to your chassis or trans tunnel, but it's pretty thin, so it's gonna be susceptible to flex, and it's not really gonna be strong enough to hold this thing in, in place for any kind of proper application. 
our proper you know ripping of that that sucker and then the other thing that's really funny and, and kind of cheesy is this thing right here so this what is intended to be is a lockout so like you pull the handbrake back and then this right here would stop it from going all the way forward and the reason why they do that is because they're actually copying a more high-end one now the high-end one has an extension this this bottom plate right here goes out and it has a flat piece of metal with some lines in it and what those do is they catch this little guy right here so that it can stop and you can pull it back click 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 and it can stop and then when you want to release it essentially like a parking brake then you just flip this up and it returns back uh, this is not included on this one so this is kind of just like a oh we'll just copy that so it makes it look as close as that other quality one but it's not, it's really pointless. So this is totally dumb, I would just take it off. Um, overall though, for the price, it's kind of hard to beat if you want just a cheap budget build, you know, this thing, like I said, 30 or 40 bucks shipped, uh, and, but swap that out. So it's gonna end up costing you closer to 90 or so, plus whatever lines you're gonna need. So totally separate deal. All right, uh, let's move into this one right here. Uh, another very inexpensive one, you know, from overseas. Uh, about $30 or so. This has some different features than, than this one right here. Basically, similar style. It's a pull back with the master cylinder behind, just like this one. You can see here, it does have a lockout mechanism to hold it, just like a parking brake. So um, this is kind of a neat feature. You know, it allows you to pull the handbrake and then set this but uh, I'll be honest, you know, setting your hydraulic system in a full bind like that is really a temporary solution. It's gonna put extra load or stress on the master and the, the calipers in the back. And it's really not an ideal situation for parking the car, you know, a, a standard handbrake or, or drum brake with a cable is gonna be a much better way to do that with a ratcheting holding mechanism. So anyway, uh, it's got a couple other features. You can adjust the height of the handle here. It's got some slotted and holes on the, the fulcrum here. And it's got a standard, you know, plate style with four holes. So that's really good for mounting. This is pretty thick as well, 3 8 inch. This is aluminum, so you can't really weld it easily unless you can weld aluminum. And you can see it's anodized or coated, so you're gonna have to get rid of all that. Um, aluminum is, you know, really lightweight, but it's also not quite as strong typically, so you have to make it thicker. That's why you'll see the aluminum ones are typically a much thicker material than the steel. And same thing here, it comes with a very inexpensive 0.75 master, uh, pretty standard stuff. Again, I would swap that out if I were you. But overall, for the money, not not bad, you know, not too bad. I, don't, I haven't used it, so I don't know about this leverage. The handle's kind of tiny, so I don't know if it would bend or whatever, but um, you can also see the tolerances aren't exactly great. You know, they, they have, it's got plenty of slop in every direction. Uh, you can see that, but that's just how it goes, you know. And so you could go in here with shims and and replace the hardware and tweak it and get it all just perfect if you wanted. Just adding, you know, cost and time to the install. But if you saved a couple hundred bucks and you got plenty of time and like to tinker, not a bad option. All right, let's move on to the GK Tech one here. This is the GK Tech handbrake you can get. This one has a really nice handle on it. I really like this handle quite a bit. Uh, CNC, it's aluminum, it's really, really nicely designed. It's, it's pretty elegant. Uh, theirs is completely sold as an a la carte system here. So you can buy the handle separate from the base and that's separate from the master cylinder. So the handle's a little bit expensive actually. I think it's about 80 bucks or so. And then this guy's in the 60 or $100 range. I don't actually remember, um, but um, pretty good design. Now this one I would say is probably a little bit more kind of cut out for my taste. You can see a lot of open areas here and they did that to make it lightweight and maybe to look kind of cool. But you know, I've had a lot of issues with the thinner ones flexing and any kind, anytime you have flex in your handbrake, it's gonna to translate to less pressure or force on the master, so less hand braking or, or braking force. So you wanna try and make these as rigid and as solid as possible. And that's why you see the most expensive ones have a really solid, thick base mount for them because they know the importance of that. So the GK Tech one, it's got some standard mounting holes right here. They actually do come with a really small reinforcement plate. And that guy goes right there uh, underneath the, the, the trans tunnel or wherever. Kind of small, doesn't really distribute much load or force. 
So you might want to beef that up and you know, still, still better than nothing, of course. And then of course, like I said, you can bolt on any Willwood Master. So this is obviously a very old, junky Willwood Master that I had on a previous e-brake years ago, but I just bolted it up to make sure it would work. And you can see that it is all universal and functions fine. Now, one thing I think is interesting about theirs, when this is flat, it kicks the master cylinder up at a slight angle a little bit. So again, I don't know if that's gonna affect how well this bleeds or if it's easier, harder or whatever. Uh, I tend to like everything to be as flat and level as possible because I feel like that would give the air the best chance of coming up and, and getting trapped. Maybe this is done that with that on purpose. Maybe they want the air to come up towards the output. Maybe that's a good design idea. I don't know, but it would depend on what type of master you have, right? So this one, you can see the reservoir is behind the output, whereas these, it's the exact opposite. So you got you to gotta trade off there. Um, they do, the GK does come with some other nice hardware. It comes with a nice aluminum CNC clevis with a Heim joint. This is going to be one of the less, you know, less expensive or least quality Heim joints. Uh, this guy, I think it goes in there. Yeah, I like that. Uh, this doesn't really matter that this is super high quality. I'll, I'll be honest, it doesn't have a lot of load or anything on it, but you know, there's no slop in it, which is what's important. The nicer ones are just one more nicer piece, which drives the cost up. It comes with hardware and stuff too, you know, so it does come fairly complete, ready to assemble, as long as you get the whole package. All right, moving on to this guy right here. Uh, this one, I, I must say, I was actually pretty impressed with. This is a knockoff ASD, for lack of a better phrase. Uh, it's got the same design. You can see the handle is almost identical. It is actually even nicer, I think, because it's coated black. Now, some people like the, the polish, and this looks cool too, but I prefer the interior to be kind of subdued in black. Uh, it does come with an aluminum base, and it's pretty thick, 3 8 again. But you can see this one is multi-piece, so it's bolted together. So one thing I don't like about that is that, you know, these have a tendency to come loose. So when you install them, I would put Loctite on them and torque them down and make sure that they don't come loose. Um, you can see that it does have uh, actually a pretty good Heim joint on it. You can see this little gold ring right here. That'll let you know that it is a self-lubricating and it is just a little bit better. You can see it over this one right here, which is a press-in style, not quite as good. Uh, this comes with a three-quarter master on it, just like most. Uh, again, it's not an expensive one, but it's actually a, a good knockoff, you know, or a good uh, cheap one. So the reason I say that is because it actually copies a much better Willwood one like this. You can see it's almost an exact copy. And in fact, it's got a metal cap where this one has a plastic cap. So I even like that a little bit better. I would prefer the metal cap. Same size, same design, everything else is identical. So, you know, if you wanted to get away with using an inexpensive master, I would say this is probably the one to do it. And inside, you know, it looks, looks good. There's no real major QC issues. There's no slag or grossness. It even has the rubber boot cap in there. So I'm actually pretty happy with this one. I think uh, of all the inexpensive ones, this is one of the better ones. Now I will say it was more expensive, you know, where these were 30 bucks, this one was closer to 90 or 100, uh, but it's still, you know, half the cost of the other name brand ones. So, Kind of a nice trade-off, a nice in-between or, or mid-level one. Uh, you can see everything else about it is as you'd expect. Uh, the mounting surface here is nice and flat, and it does have two pretty prominent holes. You could use like a, a 3 8 or like a 8 mil bolt through there. Um, two is not quite as good as three or four, but it's still better than nothing uh, that it's got the bolts, you know. So um, pretty good setup right there. I actually really like this one. I think for the money, this is a... Uh, Hell of a bang for the buck. So now we'll move on to this one right here. This is the quintessential knockoff Chinese handbrake uh, that you've probably seen a million times. This is actually my very first handbrake was one just like this. Uh, these are $30 shipped. They're the cheapest one you can get. Uh, they are not very good. I'll be honest straight up. Uh, real thin mounting base here, just similar to this guy. It's actually almost an identical setup. Um, comes with a cheap master, three quarter, just as always. A really thin uh, clevis here with, you know, lots of slop, as you can see, lots of play. Uh, they have this funny system here, this, this locking system. You can see these teeth right here, and they are gonna be for, you know, you can flip this guy over 
and then as you come it ratchets and it will hold itself kind of you know compressed so you're like a parking brake and you flip this up uh, it's a pretty cheesy system and in theory it's it's a good idea but when you actually use it it doesn't work very good at all because you have to push even farther to release this and what if you know your interior this is in the way or something like that not a great design that was one cool thing about this one i actually forgot to mention that this has provisions for putting this little hook guy on both sides and you can even move it forward so if your handbrake only travels a little bit um, you know where this wouldn't grab it you can move it forward a whole bolt hole and then it will grab it so you know they've, they've definitely learned a lot over the years again this this sucker like has been made for more than 10 years it was the original knockoff it started out at you know hundred dollars or whatever and it's down to 30 bucks uh, I know you can buy them on eBay, Amazon all day, 30 bucks. Not a very good one. Uh, the handle is is all right, I guess. I mean, will it work? Sure, it, it works. Uh, it's just not very good. So, you know, the absolute cheapest one, I try to stay away from. I prefer my, my car and especially my interior bits to be, you know, something of quality. It doesn't necessarily have to be the best or the most expensive, but I want something that everything that I touch, everything that's got a tactile feel, I want to be of quality. So I wear good gloves. I want to have a good helmet, I want to have a good seat, I want to have a good steering wheel, and I really want to have a good handbrake with a good ergonomic handle that I like. So that covers it for all the knockoff ones. Oh, one other thing, I, I picked this up. So if you are getting one of the kind with the pass-through master cylinder, which is pretty standard, this is actually something kind of cool. Uh, it's a master cylinder that you can screw in, and then it becomes a dual caliper setup so where this would be for an inline style this is a just a master that you put on or, or sorry a reservoir i called it a master cylinder this is a reservoir that you can just screw on to any of these right here and then boom you have a standard dual caliper bracket or dual caliper handbrake setup uh, what's interesting about this is you know it's a really big reservoir so that can be good and bad if you had this mounted like this, it would be a push style. You see that? Where the reservoir size maybe doesn't matter as much. But if it's a pull style, which is what most people do, when you go to grab it, you can see that my, my elbow catches it right there and it will scrape, it'll catch my elbow, whatever. It's really big and you certainly don't need that much fluid capacity for a handbrake. So it's definitely overkill, um, but it's an option. And I think this is only 10 or 15 bucks, so not too bad. Uh, it's, it's aluminum. It's not the greatest cut. The threads on it are, are, you know, let's just say they're not perfect. Uh, they need a little bit of lube or a little bit of polishing to get them to work right. But it's got the little rubber boot here in, and it's going to work fine. You can actually see that the hole is not even drilled in the middle for the fitting right here. It's just part of that quality control, you know. It's, you get what you pay for, and that's exactly the point of this whole thing is that you are curious at home which is the best handbrake for the money, well, you can, you know, use your judgment on this video and decide which one you like best or which one is, is the best investment for you at home. You know, you, I don't know how much money you got. It's none of my business. And so you decide how you want to build your car. But that's just a kind of a, a nice option. I'm going to jump over here real quick to these Chase Bays ones. We'll talk about these just briefly. We talked about the, the three different styles. You've got the pull up, you've got the pull back, and then you've got the push or the reverse master style. So... This is really cool. This is the kind that I use in my S14. Uh, I have a, a PBM one in my S14, which I'll take a quick video of. It's the older style, pretty sloppy, not the best, but it's worked many years, so I, I can't complain too much. But if you look, this one, when you pull, the master's in front, so the fulcrum and everything is oriented so that you can have the master in front of you, which is great for packaging, especially in my car, but you still have a pullback style, which I prefer the pullback. It gives you the most leverage, and for me, it's the most comfortable and ergonomic. Uh, this is cool too, because you can unscrew the handle and swap that out if you have a desire to do something custom there or change the shape, it's pretty nice. And this is a really nice, beefy handle. I really like this. It might be a little bit heavier, which is not a problem usually, but if you're searching for grams, maybe don't get this one, but it's really solid. It actually kind of mimics the Samsonis sequential gear selector, so it's really, really nice. I love it. Again, I'm not too keen on how they kicked the master sideways. I know it was a packaging thing. Uh, I, I've never used one, so maybe it's fine. Maybe I'm overreacting, but I think that it's better when they're oriented vertical. 
Now one thing I do really like that they did is they have the option for a external reservoir for a dual caliper setup utilizing the inline master. So that's really nice. And this is using a banjo style setup. So you can orient this however you want to get it to where it's level. If this maybe doesn't mount perfectly flat in your car, if it mounts like this or like this, you can loosen this bolt and orient this however you want. And of course, being Chase Bay's, it's a really, really nice setup. It's got really, really tight tolerances, um, really nice, you know, coatings and everything like that. I can't say enough good things about the quality of their products. It's really, really well done. So good job, guys. Um, you know, they are more expensive, of course, but again, you get what you pay for. That's how it goes. So this is nice, and it's probably the best size reservoirs. You know, it's not overly huge. It's clockable, unlike the fixed Willwood. And you can, you know, rest assured that it's not going to smash your elbow. Uh, another little detail I just realized is that it's got a smooth radius here for the cap. Whereas these other ones, you know, have a, a kind of a sharp, notchy one. So even if I catch my elbow on this, it's not going to hurt so much. Uh, I'll slip right off of it. But this is a really, really good setup. I like it. You could also swap this Willwood and flip it 180. So if this, you know, for your own application, the packaging wasn't correct, then you can flip it and it'll be on the other side. So you can move this reservoir over just a bit. But this is the pullback style with the reservoir and the master behind. So for most setups, I think this is probably the simplest. You know, you're gonna have easy access to the reservoir and it's gonna be just a simple install. Uh, again, uses the same base. They just change these mounting points right here. You can see the slight changes there, but the rest of it's the same. Again, countersunk holes for that. Great design, nice e-brake, I really like it. Uh, again, my only complaint is there's a little too much play here for my personal preference in the clevis itself. So um, other than that, solid e-brake. So one last quick thing I wanna say, you notice I wasn't pulling on these handbrakes and, and cycling them through. Uh, that's important, you guys, when you buy one of these, don't do that, okay? You're gonna wear out the master cylinder prematurely. There's no fluid in there, which helps lubricate that. You wanna not pull on them. You wanna leave the seals in there alone as best as possible until you put fluid in there and go to bleed it. So uh, another thing I wanted to say is, you know, I was really surprised with this Chase Bay's as high a quality of a piece as it is having that slop. So I actually reached out to them and said, Hey, what's up with this? And they told me that, you know, right now they, this clevis right here usually has a much tighter tolerance and they don't have this slop or this slack in there. Uh, but however, their, you know, machine shop guy right now, he made these, he sent them to them and they were out of, out of spec. And instead of sending them back because their machine shop got shut down for Corona, they just had these as a temporary piece. So once this quarantine is lifted and they can get new ones, they are gonna do that. They're gonna send me some. Uh, if I decide to use this, I actually don't know until I go to try and install it in my car. But they're gonna send me some and if you guys have bought one and this has got a little bit of slop, then you'll get one as well. So. Um, other than that, they actually told me the older ones didn't have that. So maybe you're watching this and you have a Chase Bays and you're like, mine doesn't do that. And that would be why. So other than that, great product. And that was the, my only complaint. Uh, this is probably my favorite. I think, uh, once I, I go to bleed it and install it, I'll know if this tilted master cylinder is, is okay. But other than that, I think the design wise cleanliness and, and ergonomics, the handle, everything, this is the one that I love the most. Um, Certainly not the cheapest, but you know, you're only going to buy one and put it in your car and you're going to yank on this thing thousands of times in a, a year. So you might as well get a good one. <laughs> okay, I think that's enough talking about e-brakes. It's been like half an hour or more. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you learned something. I certainly did. I learned that I spent way too much money on a bunch of e-brakes to entertain you guys at home. But hopefully, again, you, you learned something and you'll subscribe to the channel and you'll share this around and show your friends because... You know, it's all about what we can learn from each other and learning from each other's experiences. So I think uh, next step I'm going to do is take all of these and go and install them in my new project and figure out exactly which one works best. We'll do another video on that and then I'll decide and then I'm going to try and return all of these because I don't need this many e-brakes. I don't know which ones I can return or how long it's been, but I'll figure that out. So thanks again for watching. I appreciate you guys and 
Let me know if you have any other questions or any comments down below. If you have anything to add to this, of course, we're all here to learn, please do. And I'll make sure to add it to the description if I feel like it's really important enough. Other than that, see you guys on the next one. Peace.